Hi, this is Miss Lou, and today we're going to be looking at the digital art program that we're going to be using. Now, if you've ever used digital art programs, you've probably heard of Photoshop or something similar. Um, Photoshop is a very powerful program that is used by professional as well as amateur digital artists, and it is a pay program so you have to pay to use it. Um, if you were to get the software or when you were able to buy the software, you're looking at buying it for uh, somewhere around $1,000, sometimes more. If you use the cloud right now, you're looking at anywhere from $15 a month and up, depending on how much, uh, you know, if you're a student or a professional. Um, as a student and as someone who is just learning how to do digital art and learning how to do digital art programs, I would ne never recommend um, really getting into a program that you have to pay for. Now, if, after this course, if you really, really like this and you'd like to learn more about it and you want a more powerful program, then that is something that you can choose to do. But what I love about Photopea is it is accessible to everyone and it works really well on your Chromebooks. So for today, we're going to be talking about a few keywords and I'm going to show you how to create a new workspace, um, how to pull images from Google or any other sources so that you can um, work with them and manipulate them in Photopea. And then I'm also lastly going to show you how to save your images. So the first thing I want to talk about is digital images. When you're looking at a digital image, any digital image is created out of pixels. Pixels are basically small squares of color that when put together create your image. So we're going to be using my lovely photo of my puppy Ellie as an example. When you zoom into, oops, zoom into the photo, you'll notice that it's pretty clear. You can see every pretty much piece of fur on her. And as I continue to zoom in, you'll notice more detail, but it's also getting a little bit blurrier. And as I keep going, you notice that these all turn into little squares. And I'm zoomed in so much now that you can actually see the frame around each pixel. Now, the word that goes next to it is resolution. And resolution refers to how many pixels make up a square inch of the photo. So when we look at the lower resolution version of this photo, you'll notice right away that it's a little bl blurrier. Not a bad photo, but again, go back to the original and then the one with less resolution. So obviously an image with a higher resolution is going to be sharper and clearer and then the image with a lower resolution is going to be blurrier. So you remember how much we had to zoom in to this photo to be able to see the pixels. With this one being a much lower resolution, we have to just zoom in just a little bit to start seeing the little squares. At this point, we could still see each individual piece of fur in the original one, but you're noticing that's much blurrier and it really doesn't take much zooming in before we hit the pixel frame version of this image. So what that means is when you're looking for an image to manipulate um, of your own, whether it's in your phone or on Google, you want to make sure that you're getting images that are nice and crisp as well as having a high resolution. Those are going to give you the best results for your projects. So when we're creating a new workspace, there's two different ways that you can create a new workspace. I'm going to go ahead and refresh my screen right here. If you're using Photopea for the first time, you might notice a big banner at the top with a large X on the upper right-hand corner. 
Um, it's just the intro to Photopea. For if you're using it for the first time, just click on that big white X and then you'll see the interface um, menu looking like mine. Once you have saved Photopea into your history, you shouldn't be seeing that big X anymore, but you know, it's not a big problem if you do see it again. So you can see right away the intro menu here allows you to create a new project. You can call it a project, a workspace, a canvas, however you want to call it. Um, I'm probably going to refer to it as a workspace and and sometimes that all comes from my years of working in Photoshop. So um, if I uh, use a term that you don't understand, please let me know and you know and I'll clarify it. So you can click new project here. You can also go up to the menu bar right up here and hit file and new. Both of them will bring you to this menu. The good practice of naming your project will just help you in the long run when you save this image so you don't have to name it later and you won't forget to name it. Um, if you are working with a lot of files, you probably don't want a whole bunch of files that say new project, new project one, new project two. That tells you nothing when you're looking at a list of, um, you know, 50 projects. Um, so you want to be specific with the name of your project so that when you're looking at the names, it'll kind of jog your memory of what that is. So when you're creating your workspace, you can change the width and the height, and you'll notice this little drop down. Right now it says PX, which is pixels. So right now it's using the measurement of pixels. You can also use the measurement of inches. These are the two main ones that I use. I don't use any of the other ones. You can also change the background of your workspace. So if you would like it to be have a white background, um, just keep it at default. You can also keep it at or have it at transparent. So let me show you what happens when you create a white background. Obviously that's, you know, makes sense, right? Now what happens when we create a transparent background? Um, I don't usually use background, so I'm not even going to go over that right now. Um, but a transparent background is something that we will use. And you'll notice this little checkerboard. So the difference between this is this basically tells you that there is no background. So if I were to cut a piece of this, I would be taking the white background with me. If I were to cut a piece of this, nothing would come. Um, and I'll, we'll go into more detail about the benefits of using a transparent background later. I just wanted to show you how you can do either one. So the next step is pulling images in from Google or Google Classroom or anywhere that I might have you pull images from. If you're pulling from Google, you want to click on images and we'll just look for cats right now. So how do you know if you have a good resolution photo? Right here, all of these photos look great, but they're little thumbnails. They're small. So you can't really tell whether they're clear or not. Um, one way yet you can do this is by clicking on tools and then clicking large. So all of these photos are going to be having a high resolution now. You don't have to worry about it. Um, although if you're working on a Chromebook, you want to avoid getting a photo that has too high of a resolution um, otherwise you might be experiencing them some serious lag so let's say we want this photo right here if i move my mouse on top of the photo you'll notice numbers popping up on the lower left hand corner these numbers refer to the resolution the width and the height resolution in pixels of this image so this is a very good size for uh, working in a Chromebook. It's not too, too big. You want to stay somewhere around 800 to 1,000. 
um, to be able to use a, get a picture that's going to be clear enough. If I want this image, I'm going to right click on it and then I'm going to click save image as. So I'm going to go ahead and save this image and I've already saved this image. So for me, I'm going to go ahead and cancel this. Then go back into Photopea and again, I can either open from computer on this menu or I could go up to file and open. Either way is fine. So let's find that photo of the kitten right there. Just double click and it will open it up. Now, sometimes you might find a photo that will not save correctly, or maybe you're just, you just want to use one part of the image really quickly. It's not something that you necessarily need to save. Um, I'll show you how to do that as well. So this image, obviously I've, I've, seen these images already you'll notice that it's a really huge image so again this is not recommended for anyone working on a chromebook um, this will probably make your computer lag depending on what else you have up if i tried to save this again right click and then hit save image as you'll notice this file type is webp file this is not a recognizable photo image for Photopea. Um, it basically saves this image as a website. So let's say I really, really want this photo still. You're going to right click on it and then hit copy image. So what's cool about Photopea is you can just copy and paste pictures into it as well instead of saving it. The benefit of saving it is if you need that reference photo again, you still have it. But if it's something like I said, you're just doing using temporarily just for one little part and you know you're not going to need it again, um, copying and pasting was perfectly fine. So I copied it. I'm going to go up to file and I'm going to click new this time, not open because I did not save it into my files. And you'll notice that when I clicked new project, it automatically changed the pixels for me. And I can either choose transparent or put white, doesn't really matter. I'm going to go ahead and hit create. And then I'm going to go up to edit and paste. There we go. So these are two ways that you can grab images from uh, Google by saving it into your computer and by copying and pasting. Now, lastly, I want to talk about saving. So there's two ways of saving files in here. One way is by saving as a PSD. What the benefit of saving it as a PSD is this is if you're not finished with your project. And let's say in your project, you have multiple layers and you want to preserve those layers so that you can move them around and manipulate them separately again. It's very important that you save it as a PSD. If you are finished with a, your project, there are two ways that you can save it. You're going to click on export as, and you're going to either save it as a PNG or a JPEG. The PNG is a much larger format and it will like preserve more details, but it will compact all those layers. Um, and then a JPEG is like the more less detailed, more compact version of a final save. Both the PNG and the JPEG are acceptable files to turn in to Google Classroom and I'd be able to see it. If you save it as a PSD and turn in a PSD, um, I will not be able to see that file unless I save that file onto my own computer and open it up in Photopea and so on, which is a lot more um, steps on my part. I do want you to get used to saving as a PNG and JPEG for finished files and make sure to turn those in. So that concludes our really quick intro on how to 
use Photopea to create a new workspace and save and download images. Um, if you have any questions, I would be happy to help. Thanks for joining me.